Space Coconut. Okay. In the last video, I briefly talked about the data the devs, and particularly Almo, use to make decisions based on whether a killer is overperforming or not. In this video, I want to take a deeper look at this topic and discuss the many reasons why this method of balance might not be helping the game, but instead are making it less enjoyable over time. Before I get into the video, it will greatly improve your life if you sub to the channel, hit the bell, like the video, share the video, follow me on Twitch, I was lying before, follow me on Twitter, and join the Discord if you want to chat with other coconuts. Links to everything are in the description. Is anyone else wondering why queue times for Survivor are so long when there are supposedly millions of players playing the game at any given time? Because we've got a million... We have, we have like on the order of a few hundred thousand daily active users and like a million weekly active users. We don't know what the numbers look like on console, but I do know that the majority of my matches are against console players, and as a killer player, my queue times are pretty quick. There are probably nuances to the player base's play schedule that shifts and changes during the week though. McLean mentioned something about that once before, but he never actually shared the numbers. Players speculate that there are fewer players playing the killer role because of how unfun it can be. While this feels true since my own queue times as a killer are pretty quick, the devs will probably never share that data. They don't like being proven wrong after all. It's just as well, and because the question might be more important than the answer. If there are hundreds of thousands of players playing the game, why are queue times so bad for survivor players? Moving on. So as Clint says, we can filter for experience and we can say, how does Hillbilly do among people who've only played him 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times? We can do all of this shit. And if we're looking at the top 1%, that is not just new, that is not new players. Those are people who have invested heavy amounts of time into it. But I'm not talking, I'm not looking at the statistics like that. I'm looking at it by taking the top 1% for kill rate of players who play each killer. So this is the top 1% of nurse players. Not the top 1% of players in general, but the top 1% of nurse players. And you can, with the number of players we have, you can make the assumption that the top 1% of players have pretty much reached the skill cap of their respective killers. And so that, that measurement tells us what the skill caps are for the different killers. And nurse, very high. She's not number one, but she's very high. And it's because Freddy is higher. Um, don't run too far away. I and that's not, just, that's not just uh, skill. The devs haven't really made it really clear what the kill rate means for a killer. So I'm going to assume for this video that it means the percentage of matches where a killer will sacrifice three or four survivors. Right now, we don't have a matchmaking system that puts players of equal skill together. It simply doesn't happen. It matches players according to their rank, and even then there's a wide range of ranks that players will be placed with depending on the amount of time that passes. It's a well-known fact that the emblem system is a very bad metric that they still use to place players into ranks anyway, so that doesn't help the situation either. The main issue with the emblem system is that players who make it to red ranks might not have a high skill level that would merit a high rank. This means that ranks no longer really mean that the player is skilled because red ranks are so easy to achieve. This has been a well-known fact for years. Now that we're all on the same page, what would you think if I told you that Freddy had a kill rate of 60% in red ranks? You wouldn't be surprised because the majority of survivors in red ranks are potatoes and a decent killer should do well against them, right? If it only takes one bad survivor to cause a decent Freddy to gain a 3 or a 4k, does this mean that Freddy is overperforming? Or does it mean that Freddy's opponents were underperforming? We have no idea because we don't know how skilled the survivors were in those matches. Almost said that he's only looking at the top 1% of killers to determine if they're overperforming or not. What makes those players the top 1% of Freddy players? If that's a stat they can track, I'd love to know where I rank among Hag players. Can I have a leaderboard please? 
But based on what we know about the emblem system and the matchmaking system, what kind of survivors do you think those top 1% Freddy players were going against? Do you think they were top tier red rank survivors? Or the smooth brain potato survivors you usually play with or against? This leads us back to the most important question that I hope Almo addresses in the future, or someone asks him in the future. When talking about the matches of the top 1% of killers, are the survivors they go against the top 1% of survivors? Almo kind of already answered this when he said that their data is very broad. They're not looking at the data in a way that enhances the clarity of the answers they're looking for. How about this doozy of a question? If Almo looked at the top 1% of survivors who escape their matches, and then looked at all of their matches against Freddy, what percent of those matches did they escape? If those survivors escaped more often than they were sacrificed, would Freddy be buffed because he was underperforming? I understand that due to the two kill, two escape nature of the design philosophy the devs use, that the question needs to be adjusted and it's not really accurate. But I think you understand what I'm trying to say here. So here's the problem. Almo is basing the decision to nerf an overperforming killer who might be overperforming against weaker opponents in the majority of those matches who are there thanks to the ease of getting to red ranks and the matchmaking system that seemingly ignores rank altogether. So what happens when a killer and various perks are nerfed based on flawed and skewed data? We get overcorrections like the nurse, tone deaf changes like the spirits, weak killers like the twins, more second chances for survivors, quality of life changes that take years to be implemented, bugs that never get fixed for years, and a dwindling killer player base that may or may not be the cause of ever increasing survivor queue times. This video is only meant to ask these questions based off the statements Almo made in his stream. It's not meant to be snide in any way. I'm genuinely interested to know if this angle was considered in their data analysis. To be honest, I'd absolutely love to get in touch with the data guy, because there are so many assumptions I have about the game that would be cleared up with some accurate data analysis. Maybe I'll do a little research and find out who this person is and find out if they'd be interested in helping me out. As I was writing this, I found one. I'll send him a message on Twitter and see how he'll say no to the request. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and got a little insight into how statistics can be manipulated or used incorrectly. It was helpful and insightful for me, and I think I'll be visiting Almo's stream more often in the future to gain more insight into the mind of our main balance guy. In the meantime, I'll see you in the fog.